world is watching and waiting as Israel's ground invasion of Gaza appears to be imminent. Israel's defense minister telling troops to get ready. President Biden addressing the nation, making the urgent request to Congress for more than $100 billion in aid for Israel and Ukraine, saying that the U.S. national security hinges on support of our allies. The president also finally addressing the threat from Iran without mentioning any specifics. Iran is, is, is supporting Russia in Ukraine and is supporting Hamas and other terrorist groups in the region. And we'll continue to hold them accountable, I might add. Just minutes before the president spoke Thursday night, two rockets were fired at U.S. and coalition forces in Baghdad. Earlier that day, a U.S. naval destroyer in the northern Red Sea shot down three land attack cruise missiles and several drones fired by Iranian-backed Houthi militia in Yemen. Iran-backed Hezbollah, meanwhile, continues to fire on northern Israel. Joining me right now is House Foreign Affairs Committee member and Army veteran himself, Brian Mast. He also served with the Israeli Defense Forces. Congressman, thanks very much for being with us this weekend. Yeah, I'm always glad to be with you. Can you assess the situation today and the U.S.'s response to all of this aggression, the war on Israel? You know, the response is we have uh, military assets positioned in the region that need to be there because there should always be every expectations that if Americans are killed or certainly if this many Americans are held hostage as we're seeing that there be Americans that are coming to rescue them. That is what's going right in the situation. Uh, you have a, a total assessment of the battlefield taking place by very capable commanders like our CENTCOM commander General Carrilla of what's going on with the tunnel systems, the urban terrain. What assets do we have available on the wing of an aircraft or on the, the deck of a ship? or on our assets on the ground. How does that correlate with the assets multinationally of Israelis and others to do uh, hostage rescue missions in any of those places or where those that have been captured might be being moved uh, around the region, not just in the Gaza Strip, possibly to Egypt, possibly to Syria, possibly to Lebanon or other places. Very uh, broad a, a, and far-reaching situation for defense and hostage rescue here, and it's all being assessed. So what about uh, President Biden's request to Congress? Do you think that's going to fly to tie these wars together, Israel and Ukraine? I think it's dead on arrival. Now, luckily, uh, you have the ability in Congress to say the president does not write policy legislation or hold the purse strings in that way. So in Congress, we get to originate that bill however we want. Uh, I think absolutely it will be separated. Ukraine aid, Israel aid, uh, aid to Taiwan, aid to the southern border, you name it. I think certainly in the House of Representatives, you will see those be individual action items. And if they are not, it will be dead. Are you worried about a terrorist attack on U.S. soil in the middle of all of this? 100 percent. You saw the, uh, the, the way that ISIS inspired people, um, not just across the Middle East, but in Europe, in the United States of America, around the globe. We see what's going on on college campuses, in Times Square, in places like that. To think that there's not a percentage of those people that are radicalized uh, Islamic terrorists that would go out there and kill people while yelling Allah Akbar would be naive to think. Uh, it's very realistic that they, they came in, whether on some visa or whether they're illegally across the southern border, it's very likely that they're among us. And as you mentioned, we're seeing demonstrations erupt on campuses across the country. Lawmakers are calling into question the special tax status of universities. It allows them to avoid paying any federal, uh, federal income taxes on education-related purposes, Congressman. Your alma mater is Harvard. It receives more than 65 percent of its total sponsored revenue from federal funding. And just this week, Harvard students staged a die-in and a walkout in protest against Israel, accusing Tel Aviv of genocide. Your reaction? Yeah, we sent a letter from the House of Representatives, uh, Harvard alumni, uh, with many of us that signed this saying, listen, you need to step out. You need to not just haphazardly say that both sides have things that people should realize and we should be sympathetic to this. You need to condemn this. Yeah, somebody has a First Amendment right to say what they want, but that does not mean that it does not come without consequences. And the idea that they're going to, uh, you know, exercise their First Amendment in total anonymity and think that there are no consequences for the things that they say. There's support of terrorists that, as, as uh, unfortunately, has become 
cliche to say at this point, beheading people, burning people, killing children, killing the elderly, holding hundreds hostage. Well, the, the left is asking us to exercise restraint in this, in a situation that we would never be expected to do in the face of Pearl Harbor or 9-11 or anything else. There is a leeway being given in this situation, whether on college campuses uh, to, to the, you know, these that support Palestinians, or whether in the media like Al Jazeera or others who still have it up at the top of their web pages that Israel killed 500 people in a hospital or anywhere else, there is a leeway being given to them that would not exist anywhere else, and that bias is costing lives here in the capital with Tlaib and Omar and other places uh, beyond that. Well, and, and no mention that these terrorists are holding hostages as we speak. There are 203 hostages that we know of. By the way, the president is going to send $100 million to the Palestinian people. Do you have a confidence that that money is not going to be taken by Hamas? No confidence that it will not be. Whether it's a good, whether it's a, a grain of, 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 of some kind of food, whatever it is, no confidence that it will not be taken by Hamas. But again, it goes back to the point that I made before. The, the Palestinian support for Hamas is far more prevalent than what the president acknowledged in his speech last night, directly saying that Hamas doesn't represent the Palestinians. No, they are in and among them and have been for decades. They, were, they are literally the largest elected block of, of what is their elected government. There haven't been elections in a number of of years, but every person that I've spoken to for the years that I've been in Congress, left or right, acknowledges that if there were a popular election in Palestinian-controlled territories today, that Hamas would win that popular election. So yes, they are in and among every bit of, of government, society, and infrastructure throughout the region. So if there's aid that goes there, it will go to Hamas. Wow. Congressman, thank you for your service to our great country, and thank you for being here this weekend. Thank you, Maria. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.